Okay, I think we can start and yeah. You know. Okay, sounds good. So hi everyone. Uh, I'm Wendy. I'm the president of the CFES. Also, we're a really small group, so if you are comfortable, feel free to turn on your camera and and turn on your mic to it to participate. But otherwise, uh, welcome to our session. Uh, so today we're going to be talking about engineering, technology, and society uh, for National Engineering Month in Ontario. Um, so like I mentioned, I'm a CFES president, the Canadian Federation of Engineering Students. I'm also a computer engineering at University of Sherbrooke in Quebec. Well, I'm actually a graduate. I just graduated in December. I'm just so used to saying that, that I'm a student that I forget. Um, but yes, I've been involved in the, in the student engineering community for like about four years now, and this is like my very last involvement. Uh, so I'm super happy to be able to talk about the UNSCGs and kind of raise awareness on these topics. Um, and I'm also here with Daviani. Would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Daviani Vasta, and I'm also part of uh, the CFES officer team. Uh, my role is the Engineering Change Lab Commissioner. And I'm a fourth year mechanical engineering student at Memorial University of Newfoundland. Amazing. So the mission of this CFS, yes, for those who are not as familiar with how we work, we have different objectives. So first is provide opportunities for students to develop their skills, whether it's leadership, communication, technical skills, or stewardship. We also represent students across Canada. We represent over 80,000 students across the country. So we have different position papers that we call census and that we use those papers to advocate on behalf of engineering students. And then the last part is information sharing. So creating a platform for engineering students, but also for engineering societies to meet and exchange um, ideas. So as for the goals of the presentation, actually, I'll let uh, Debbie take it away. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, so the goal of today's presentation is, first of all, uh, empower, um, the, empower you, the students and future engineers about the UN SDGs and identify our responsibilities with the UN SDGs and uh, also identify what are some of the barriers of participation uh, with the UN SDGs, as well as at the end of the session, we would like to have an open discussion with everyone on uh, how we, what are some of the next steps we can take as students uh, um, with the, to move forward with the UN SDGs and um, create impact. Um, when did you want to go to the next one? Yes. Thank you. So, um, most of you might have heard about the UN SDGs, um, but uh, if you haven't, I'd just like to lightly introduce it. Uh, why do the SDGs matter or why do they even exist? For example, these are some of the questions that could come to your forefront of your mind. And so the sustainable development goals are the 2030 agenda for sustainable development. Uh, which provides a global blueprint for dignity, peace, and prosperity for people and the planet now and in the future. So there are 17 core goals which are being used in the development of both private and the civil sector, national development plans and policies around the world. And you can read more about each of these goals and uh, how they are being uh, accomplished by uh, help help being accomplished by different countries uh, in the link provided below the diagram. And next, um, sorry. Um, we also want to like uh, uh, keep that context of what uh, and realize, I guess, like what engineers do. Um, so it's like we design, we implement, we test and we deliver. <laughs> um, and I, I want to use this as a leeway to like my next, um, the next slide and to introduce the Engineering Change Lab, which is the part, uh, one of the partners for the CFES. And so what the Engineering Change Lab is, it's a social lab uh, that brings um, the various stakeholders of the engineering community from like academia, industry, and all those leaders together 
to um, to brainstorm about like um, ways um, the the engineer like the engineering community can be made more responsible of the technology like it creates. For example, um, if I was to put it into context, like. Uh, technology is advancing at such a fast rate, like uh, it's difficult to um, think about uh, um, what are the implications of each of like um, each each advancement, I, I guess. So uh, that way, uh, the Engineering Change Lab helps uh, present a framework uh, through like principles approach to uh, teach uh, future engineers and um I, everyone in the engineering community to be mindful and uh think about like the implications of technology and engineering design so i'll let wendy continue sorry <laughs> yeah so i'll continue with the next part with which is the un sdgs and the future of the profession yes yeah okay so yeah i think i thought i heard someone speak um so in september and october 2020 we sent out a survey so a survey that was sent to all engineering students uh, across canada we got about 3,000 survey responses which is about 2,800 in english and 200 in french which represents about 3.5 percent of the current current engineering undergraduate population um, so I'm just I just wanted to kind of show you what the data is showing us at the moment and like how like the interaction between students and the UN SDGs at the, at the moment. So we see that uh, for, for people who responded, there are more men than women, but we still see a large proportion of women who were interested uh, in, in the survey and actually took the time to respond to it, even if that proportion when you think about the whole like engineering population, you know that there's usually less than 35% of women in engineering. It's about, to, depending on the schools, it can vary between 10 or 20 even, depending. Um, so you, you see that like women were interested in participating even though uh, they might seem less, like even though they might be less in total in the, the, the engineering population. The year of the program, we see a lot of first years, almost half of it was actually first years that responded. Uh, we ha had like a fourth about was um, from second year. So like the, the first years were really enthusiastic about the survey, we can see that. And like the more you progress, a bit less uh, participation you have. Um, and then when we go really more into details about the, the survey itself, so do you agree with the following statement? I am very knowledgeable of international outside of Canada, politics and situations and could articulate my views to support an argument. So about 55% agree, 30% disagree, and 17 are neutral to this. So some people are aware of, of international politics, but it's not something necessarily common. Um, and then, do you agree with the following statement? I see myself as someone who is politically and or socially engaged. 60% agree. So you see that there's, um, there's an interest from students to engage more in, and be active in their community. And then the next statement is actually pretty interesting. It's, I am aware of the UN SDGs and feel knowledgeable about them. About only half of them agree. And then 39 disagree and 12% are neutral, but if they're neutral, they probably don't know that much about the UN SDGs, they maybe know like what the concepts are, but without digging necessarily deeper. Um, but we'll, we'll talk about that a bit later, like how this is an issue right now. And then for the question eight of the 17 UN SDGs, which one do you feel the engineers are more equipped to, um, are best equipped to tackle? So we see that there is like some, some, um, some options that stand out of the rest. So basically, we, we selected the ones that have an average of about 60% of respondents who thought that that was like a goal that they could address as engineers or as future engineers. So there's clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, industry innovation and infrastructure, sustainable cities and communities, 
responsible consumption and production, and finally, um, climate action as well. So I also wanted to introduce the Kenyan Engineering Grand Challenges. So this is an initiative that has been led by uh, the organization of the Engineering Deans Canada. So that's basically a national organization composed of all the deans that are in engineering and science. Well, it's engineering, sometimes uh, some faculties have both engineering and science within the same uh, department. So it was an initiative led by the, the by the deans, and we the CFES also collaborated into putting all of this content together. Um, so yeah, the Canadian engineering grant challenges. What are they exactly? So they're actually basically it's a common vision that all engineers should. It's basically common goals for all engineers in a sense, and not just engineers, but also like students and like future engineers. So uh, engineers in training. Um, and then based on the elements that were that we could see, like based on the, the the different goals that engineers or at least engineering students felt that they could contribute, we see that there is a correlation between those goals and what the deans also um, also uh, put forward. So at the top, you're gonna see like the like the SEG, but at the like under the the red line, you're gonna see. The grand, the Canadian engineering grand challenges, grand challenges, sorry, um, I feel like associated with with the UNSCG. So, for example, for clean water and sanitation, our our goal would be save water in our communities. Then another goal is affordable and sustainable energy, resilient infrastructure for climate action, uh, and then safe and sustainable cities as well, and sustainable industrialization. And last but not least, it's inclusive inclusive STEM education. So. Obviously, that kind of in includes everything a little bit because um, what, what, what study shows is that diversity is really important uh, in terms of not necessarily in productivity, but in terms of finding a solution that, that really corresponds to the needs of your population. The more diverse people are on your team, the more diverse perspectives you have. And so when you come up with a solution, it's, it's, where, it's more like well thought out. Um, so that's why making inclusive STEM education is super important, like doing outreach, but also making sure that students that are, who are already in the engineering program also feel included and don't feel like, you know, kind of a part of the band. So that's uh, another objective, another grand engineering grand challenges. Another <laughs> Canadian engineering grand challenges. Sorry, I yeah, makes that up. <laughs> um, so yeah, th these are the, the Canadian engineering grand challenges that have been defined based on what we as engineers can contribute uh, on. Um, and then when we look at the areas where the students were exposed to the UNSCGs, um, we see that 36%, uh, so like the, the majority of it, was actually outside of engineering. It wasn't during their, their engineering curriculum or experiences. And then 21% is extracurricular experience, like what me and Daviani are doing. It's like we're doing extracurricular, we're getting involved in our student communities. And that's how we found out about like these different initiatives. But if it weren't for that, we wouldn't be exposed to them. Um, and then 30% it's engineering course. So there is a small percentage. Well, there is like, it, it is still significant, but it's still not a high percentage uh, of people who get exposed to the UNSGs in their, in their engineering course. And then you also have co-op or work experience, 7% and research experience. There's a little bit, uh, so it's people are exposed in different in different uh, environments. Another statement was um, socially relevant topics such as the UNSCGs should be part of the engineering curriculum. club. And here, this is like really, uh, I personally find it very encouraging to see that 80% of the respondents agree. So that means that they are interested in like being active and part of you know, attaining these different goals that we set as a society, but also as a, an international, like it's really international goals. It's not just Canada, but we as Canadian engineering students, we would try to achieve those goals um, based on what we can do and based on what the industries are in our country as well. So there is interest for sure from students. Um, the other question was interesting. So engineering students should work with non-engineering students to help solve complex societal problems. 
again, a very high percentage of people agree, 93%. So this is really high and we'll get to it in a few more slides, but being able to collaborate with other students or not necessarily students, but other professionals that are not in the engineering field, is super, super important. So it's, it's, uh, it's nice to see that it's also reflected in the, the answers from the, the, the respondents. So we're gonna talk about barriers to participation. I'm actually gonna let Daviani take over this part. Uh, thank you, Wendy. And that survey was very important uh, in sense that the data it gave us like to show the gap uh, that's missing uh, for like bridging the UN SDGs uh, with the students is one of the thing is lack of like knowledge in the UN SDGs within uh, the student engineering community. Uh, as noted previously, where uh, only less than 50% of the demographic knew about the UN SDGs. And, and this is a result of the absence of the UN SDGs in our academic life, um, uh, particularly in the engineering curriculum, because there is a high number of students who are interested in, uh, in getting to uh, or helping with the accomplishment of the UN SDGs, but only 30% is, um, is introduced through the engineering curriculum. And yet as a student, uh, you, you would spend most of your time engaging with the engineering curriculum. And uh, the third point is there's a narrow uh, stereotypical lens of what an engineering profession is. Uh, um, personally, me too, when I got into engineering, my first thought was uh, I'll be working out in the field with um, valves and piping. So uh, that, is, that is the common image that comes up in many students uh, across Canada. But um, engineering, engineering is, uh, is not solely uh, technical problem solving, it, uh, it also involves um, working with cross-disciplinary teams. Uh, it could be like from policy to, uh, to the technical part. So engineering affects like every aspect of our society. And so our discussion on the social function uh, of engineering has been weak and thus limiting our abilities uh, to recognize that we can also contribute to the achievement of the UN SDGs as students and future engineers. Um, so <laughs> you, uh, before we head out into like, uh, I mean, before we uh, go to the questions, uh, like the group questions, do you guys have any questions for us? Like anything, any doubts or clarifications maybe? No. I guess we're, we're really clear then. <laughs> okay, amazing. And just to add to what Daviani said, um, there, there's also, it's like, it's, it's very, oh, I just see a question. Have you done any practical projects related to the application of technology? Um, Christy, what, like, are you talking about like the UN SDGs, like, in the context of the UN SDGs, like to accom help accomplish like one of the UN SDGs, something like that, or? And feel free to unmute if you'd like yeah. to speak. We're really small groups, so uh, as you wish. <laughs> Hi. Hi, Christy. Hi, uh, so I'm interested to know as a organization uh, leader, you two, uh, have you any done any uh, specific uh, application of the technology that helped the construction uh, industry or uh, civil engineers in the uh, industry uh, to improve the uh, ways that uh, constructions or uh, the engineering uh, that improve people's uh, quality of life or uh, to realize the goals. Yeah. Set by the UN. Do you want to give some examples? I, I have a few on the top of my head, but Daviani, you're the, the expert. Uh, so okay. So if what I if I want like what I understand from what Christy is trying to say, like if 
I have worked on a project that involves like uh, the application of technology to help like the with the UN SDGs. Like, I guess like I can refer to just my recent, like recently I was involved with uh, uh, how to change the world uh, program and there, uh, they give you this broad like uh, so I was working particularly in the context of like the uh, SDG 11 and that is sustainable cities and communities and uh, and like the local context is like the city of Calgary so uh, like in that we came up with the proposal of uh, for the transportation how the residents of Calgary use transportation and there we uh, engaged I guess uh, technology in the sense of like the app, creating an application to help uh, the residents use more of the public transport than their private cars especially those living very close to the public transport lines and uh, that way effectively reduce uh, the greenhouse gases so that is one of the things I I have done as a project I guess I don't know yeah. yeah, sure. I can give you a I can give you an example, another that, um, I, I, for example, at my work, I work at a startup, um, it's called Blaze Transit, and what we do, it's basically we offer an on-demand platform that allows transit agencies to offer on-demand transit. So it's kind of like Uber, but for public transit. So basically what we're doing is that I'm leveraging my software engineering skills to build these apps. And then there's this, my other, like my other uh, colleagues are working on like the routing algorithm so that this is using like machine learning, AI optimization, like basically we're using all this technology in order to improve efficiency, but where it matters in terms of sustainability. So for example, this means that uh, no more empty buses because the bus will only roll if, if there, it has to pick up someone. Otherwise, it won't. It won't be like it won't be uh, running around. Um, then the other thing is, well, you just decrease the greenhouse emissions, right? Because the bus is, isn't running. And then if you optimize your route, so instead of like stopping at a stop where no one's gonna, uh, no one's gonna get on the bus anyway, then don't do that route. Don't do that detour. We're just optimizing and go, going straight to the, the position that we need to go. So that way you're like in increasing speed, user experience, but you're also uh, improving like the, the greenhouse, like decreasing the greenhouse emissions. Um, and then, and it's also, we're also improving the user experience because I think I think what's really important to understand is that the UN SDGs, um, at the end of the day, it's for, for humans, right? It's like, we as humans would like the humanity to have access to clean water. We want everyone to have a roof we want everyone to have enough food. Um, see, obviously in Canada, our context is a bit different than other countries and see, we're a bit more comfortable in our lives, but it's not necessarily the same for all the countries. Um, so that, this is an example of what, of, what, uh, of what kind of technology you can implement. And there's something really cool that I, I, um, <laughs> I found the other day and I was like really amazed by it. It's, um, it's basically, um, you know, like when you run a website or anything, you need a server to run the, the website, right? So a server takes a lot of resources. It's like a physical device. And when you use a server, it create, it generates hot, hot air, right? Because it's just using and using energy. And so it, the energy is um, emitted as hot air. And this guy in Quebec, um, I don't remember his, his name, but it's so cool. Basically, what he's doing is that he's used like he's hosting servers, but he's using that energy from the servers, like the heat from the servers, to um, to uh, heat a. Uh, oh my god, where how, what do you call? Um, I just have the the word in French. I'm sorry. Um, it's like where you where you can build a not build, but like where um, strawberries are growing. Like you know what? And, uh, yeah. What are you? <laughs> Like basically a, a place where like uh, you can vineyard you know? no a what sorry I was saying vineyard no that's not it greenhouse is that I think so I think yeah I think that's the term I'm sorry it's uh it's Friday and my brain is a bit tired but <laughs> but yeah basically like where you can put uh like uh 
strawberries, carrots, anything like a, basically kind of a garden, but like for, for com commercial purposes. So it's using the heat from the servers and putting it in this other part of the, the, the not the building, but like the greenhouse, I guess. Um, so it's like we're real, literally doing circular energy. That's what it is, right? Because the thing is that in Quebec, it gets really, really cold during winter. So instead of like, instead of like adding other um, heaters in that area, we're just, again, circulate, like using circular energy. And I think that's so intelligent and it's so smart. And it's like, you know, it's just, it's just we're being inventive and creative and finding ways to use technology to our advantage because I think that's the most important part is that technology is a tool and how we use it, it really depends on us. And I think what we're trying really to say here is that when we design something, we need to also, obviously there's a, the, the functional part, like, okay, this system is actually working, blah, blah. But there's also like, how are, like, what, what uh, materials are we using to extract? You know, like, are we, are we doing it ethically? Is it people like in third, or third world countries that are like getting that, that material? You know, like there's so many things that should be considered, not just like the result, but also like through the whole process of either building a new bridge or like building this new app or whatever you think about the user experience and how it affects us. But the user experience, it's yes, the human, but it's also the, the environment because the environment, if the more polluted it becomes, like the more it affects you, you know? And then there's also the future generations because what you do now is impacting the, the earth now. And so that impact is gonna be, you know, you might not see the impact right away, but it will impact future generations. So that, that, that's basically what we're trying to say here. It's like, we have to broaden our approach so that we consider those things when we uh, build technology, basically. So I hope that answers your question. I, <laughs> I, I talked a lot, but <laughs> I'm really passionate about this subject. So <laughs> I could talk about this forever. Um, so we can, I guess we can uh, go to the next slide and see like, what are the other uh, questions? So basically, uh, we thought of doing breakouts, but since we're a small group, we're, we'll just all see in the same, uh, like in the same room, virtual room. So we just have a few questions and again, feel free to unmute and just speak up if, if you have any answers. Uh, we we want to make it as dyna dynamic as possible. Oh yeah, we have jam words. I forgot about that. Do we, do, do we want to open that now? I guess we can do it. Okay. Yeah, the questions are there. Okay, yeah. So Jamboard is a tool that we discovered this year because of virtual uh, events. Um, and it's really cool. Like we, we, we love using it. It's, super, it's pretty much like, um, it's like, yeah, it's pretty much like a board. It's like a board where you can put post, well, you'll see it's loading because uh, it takes a bit of time um, for my computer to, okay. So yeah, it's kind of like a, a board, an interactive board. You guys can uh, click on the link if you want to see the the document. But otherwise, I'll just share it in my on my screen as well. Uh, so yeah, I guess we could start by introducing each other. Uh, or I'd like to know more about our participants. So if you could just maybe, well, I mean, your name is written there, so I can see it. But like, what school do you go to? Uh, well, if you're a student first. <laughs> Uh, and if so, what school do you go to and what's your engineering program and why, what made you uh, come to this session? Like what interests you in, in, in this? So maybe we'll start with Christy. Hi, uh, the website seems not accessible. Um, okay, I'm going to just change it, sorry. So it says CFES only, okay. Anyone in the link? Now it should work. Okay, if she, if she refreshes, it should work. Does it work for you, Christy? Or I'm trying. But it's okay. It's okay. I'll just uh, I can just add the the sticker myself. If, if yeah, it's still downloading. Almost there. Okay, awesome. <laughs> okay, I saw the first page. 
with sustainable development goals, right? Yeah, exactly. You can go to page two. Uh, so, so yeah, just tell us a bit about yourself. Like, you're a student. Are you a student? Uh, I'm a recent graduate and uh, from University of Ottawa. I have a background of civil engineering master degree, uh, and my research uh, background is about the uh, water resource. So, uh, at, I saw the uh, questions you mentioned on screen. Uh, which part you um, care more about? I think the water, um, clean water and uh, salinity, uh, sanitation, and affordable and clean energy. I care more about. Do I need to write this on the board? No, I'm writing it, no worries. Are you writing it, Tavian? Uh, yeah. okay, thank you. Are we switching to another? Yeah. I guess we'll just... Well, aren't we introducing like everyone like- Okay, yeah, yeah. I just, okay, okay, yeah, I wasn't sure you're writing it, but I didn't see it. Okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll continue with Roman. It's Roman. Roman, if you're talking, you're muted, so we can't hear you. But I'm not sure if he's there. Um, how about Karen? Maha. Hi. Hello. Uh, so I missed that part. So you're um, trying to uh engage the, the audience to see what uh, what's their background and then wh which uh sustainable development goal they are interested in yeah exactly okay uh so my background i finished my master's in industrial engineering focusing on uh, circular economy nice. and um, i'm interested in uh, sustainability I, I got my certificate in sustainable management from ryerson university um so I would say all the goals are, I mean, uh, specifically, uh, uh, one of them is, is uh, completing the other, wouldn't say one, just um, all the sustainability, the, 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 the go one of them will, will, will help to, to accomplish the other. So uh, I'm not sure, maybe, I mean, Using the the, mat the the material and re reusing it and recycling it would would lead to a better use of it. And then you mentioned something about uh, the 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 sustainable cities. One of the one of the speakers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but again, how to implement it? Sometimes we have an idea and then we got we come with we come up with a solution and then uh is it is it applicable so that's mainly my my concern how just not not get coming with an idea but more to to apply it and yeah uh, yeah i think that's uh, definitely like a good question like okay we have these principles and we all agree on this that sustainability is important but now how do we act on it right so right. i think um well, to me, it's kind of like when you do an engineering project right now, like you see there's a technical part of things, then you have like the budget and other metrics. But to me, what would be really, really interesting is if we added metrics that are specifically for the environment, you know, or like, yeah. Yeah. or also- and co cost efficient, it's not, because it's, you can't convince the business people to, 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 to apply, to care about the environment unless they, they yeah there is a benefit there is yeah but but in a certain way when you think about like what sustainability is about like you said for example circular energy or like circular economy like it's literally reusing like things that would have gone to waste other like see i feel like it's already there like we we're already trying to be more efficient in the in like in the resources and now it's just we have to find a way to be more efficient in, in using resources while still being profitable. I think that's yes. like the, yes. the challenge. Yes, exactly. Yes, showing the benefit, the real benefit, the material part of that sustainability that makes people really want to be part of it 
because they know they will benefit from it. That, that's the, the hard part. I mean, everyone can say we have the solution, but unless people are convinced that they will be involved, nobody will do anything. I, I, just, I just want to add in, like, I think you would be interested in uh, doing one of like the programs uh, that the How to Change the World has. Like, it's like you know when I first read the challenge debrief and like it was like you know if you don't do like if if we were to go on the tangent we're going right now like just producing like mindless you're like is in like let's say in terms of like greenhouse gases if we're just going to like go on that route uh there are so many consequences of that like uh in terms of climate change and like uh, that can affect the economy, then it's just like, you know, a ripple effect, right? So it's like, if, you don't, if you're not going to care about it right now, it's going to even be more expensive in the future to fix. Yeah, but how to convince people? I mean, some, some of them do not that have that vision to see it this way. They just want a fast result and an immediate reflection of their benefit. Exactly. It's always like that. Yeah, and I, I think that's kind of um, one of the major issues, especially like in terms of politicians, because, you know, they have like these four years mandate, right? And like, obviously, they're all for like, yes, let's do climate change, like, let's fight climate change, blah, blah, blah. But then they don't do anything within those four years, because the industry get like some industries get mad at them, if they don't like promise like the, 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 um, the Keystone pipeline. Literally, the Keystone Pipeline. If it weren't for for the United States, like it would be that project would still be going on in Canada. So it's like, yes, the government says, yeah, like we're all for uh, for more sustainable, blah blah. But then when you see their actions, it's it doesn't reflect that. It, and it's again because we have a short term mentality. Because yeah, right. Yeah, because in the long term, we're it's not going to be like financially. It's not. It's going to be worse first and it's already pretty bad because we're already like you know the the um, the fires you know in, in Alberta like that happened uh, the different like the floodings in Montreal like all of these things are already happening and our we're already paying for it it's just that people do not understand like it's like they're they, don't acknowledge there's a problem and they, oh, yes, they exactly. have to do something to, to solve it it's just okay someone else gonna solve it some one day how somehow i don't know <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly and, and not only that but it's like like there is a problem but i think that the problem right now is also that, like the public kind of sees those events as like random events you know like oh see a storm happen you know like it's normal but the thing is that when you actually look at the data it's those events are increasing and increasing and they're getting worse every time. So then the impact is getting worse too. So it's just, you know, this really bad vicious circle that we're in right now. And I don't know how we can, you know, kind of change that, that short-term mentality so that even politicians stop, you know, just making these promises because the, the other thing that um, kind of, not that I was mad about, but it's just, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, like the, the, the federal government presents this plan for sustainability and climate change, but it's like for 2050, like that's their goal is until 2050. Uh, they're not going to be in power anymore. Like who's going to be responsible for making sure that these goals get reached by 2050? The, the conservatives? I don't think so. <laughs> if they get elected, I don't know. But you know what I mean? It's just like, like, yes, we're saying we're doing things, but if we don't actually do things, then we're just, we're just lying at this point. We're yeah, just lying to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, I, if there is an incentive or something to make people like to, to be part of it, if they get benefit or maybe uh, reduce taxes or something, they, they might feel yes we want to do something other than that nobody's responsible it's lost and everything is going the same as before and yeah. nothing is changing it, exactly it's like business as, as usual and and that's the like with covid i mean we see we literally see right now that governments can take action right away they close they close all the stores they close everything everything was yeah. on lockdown for a while and no like 
we survived like we're still here the the like the society still exists uh, i'm not saying obviously it has negative impacts on, on some people like for sure but if you support those people if you know in advance that some people are going to be more vulnerable to these you know changes then you support them but in the meantime you also make sure that these big companies big corporate companies are more are mindful of what they're doing like that's i think that's the main issue too but i care about their profit <laughs> <laughs> yes christy uh so i think engineer have the view of future if they could apply some uh, applications to um, show the impact of the environment. Uh, for example, um, in my project in the university, I did some simulations about uh, uh, the water. And if we could use this for the flood uh, predicting uh, for some specific area to show to the residents there, I think they can know uh, how this uh, environment change will uh, have an effect on their daily life and uh, maybe in they even will not lost their houses or and uh, lost all, all the things they rely on everyday life so I think engineer has the power and has the um, facilities or the tools to help people to see the future if they could combine the technology they have and uh, uh, to show them uh, um, a bad future if they don't take actions right now. I, I think we all have the responsibilities, everybody, even not the engineers, because we are living in one world. Uh, if the climate change happens in US, it might um, have an effect on Canada too, uh, later or sooner. So I think everybody should have the sense and the uh, engineer could show the impact by some video um, simulations or something uh, like the um, mm, like videos uh, to show them and uh, I think if we use the um, media uh, like uh, TVs or social media uh, in, in a good way we can also help people to know uh, the results yeah I think you, you made so many good points and again I, I totally um agree with you that it's not only the engineers responsibilities like we are part of the solution but we're not the only ones who need to be working on this because like you said it's one world right like we're all in this together whether we like it or not <laughs> so yes definitely. But, um, but another cool thing you, you mentioned too is data right like data is actually it, it, it's really um interesting that you mentioned that because it's actually because we have satellites in space that we were able to tell that climate change is happening because satellite collects data. It collects like the temperature, it collects like the store, like the, so they mean different, um, it can collect so many different information about the earth because it's basically like seeing the earth from afar, like from space, right? And like it can observe the different variations and all that. And so because of technology, because of satellites, we were able to one, determine that there was, um, you know this phenomenon climate change and now we can still use satellites but for different uh for different things so like we can use it like you mentioned like monitor these different you know indicators and see like what's happening right now is, is there like any any like um catastrophe that are going to happen soon if so how do we prevent it how do we how do we help out how do we help the populations that are going to be affected by these these events right so that again, you need that data, you need that information in order to make um, a well-educated decision, basically. And I think- Actually, uh, yeah. Uh, but... sorry to break. Uh, actually, we do have some models, uh, even you don't have the like, history data, um, or you don't have so long a time for the data in the area, you can still use the, the um, uh, models, the numerical models to predict uh, for for example, if the uh, heavy rain happened in this season, uh, double times the last year, uh, what the area will be like, and uh, what uh, what area will be affected uh, by the flooding? So I think uh, smartly use those tools is an important thing. But uh, right now, I didn't so uh, I didn't see so many companies that doing this thing because uh, maybe they cannot make a profit from this. 
um, maybe the government uh, take a responsibility to uh, do these predictions and pay some companies to uh, do the prediction and educate the public to know the effects. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of um, education to make on, on these different goals, but also I think, um, and we mentioned it in the presentation about people kind of see, you know, engineers as this, these very like technical people. Like I'm in computer engineering, for example. And like when people think about computer engineering, they usually think about like, you know, this hacker guy with like this little hoodie, you know, like that <laughs> typical image of a, of a hacker. But in reality, like, like I said, the story that I'm working on, it, it's affecting transport. But then you also have the medical field. Like you literally, you literally have apps that you can take a, a photo of your skin and with that photo, the app analyzes the data and it can correlate and see like if you have some, you know, signs of, of an illness or something. And that's like, that's amazing, right? And like those, there are so many different things like that, that for example, AI again, we can use a lot of like data and kind of, you know, find what are the common themes and figure it out, like figure out like what, what what's like happening in, in that data set basically that you have. So. Yeah, I, I think we really see technology as a tool for us to get to these objectives. And when we use technology to, for, for whatever reason you need it, like, I mean, you're still going to need, say, we're, we're still going to need to travel, we're still going to need to, um, you know, use computers. Uh, but if we're able to find ways to do that efficiently while still being mindful of the resources that we have, then then I think that's where we're going to win. And I guess, I guess it's a really good question on like, how do we convince other stakeholders, right? Like how do we convince companies that are maybe, you know, they're more focused on, on, um, on money than on like the environment. But again, if, if you're able to have the metrics, like literally show like the, like for example, a circular economy, like uh, I know like a company in Quebec, what they do is basically um, they, pr they produce juice and they produce juice from the, the like the fruits and vegetables that are not being used. So they just like in the, the grocery stores, like you know the vegetables and fruits that kind of get like ugly a little bit and like people don't want to buy. Well, they basically use those um, those ingredients and put them in smoothies and then they sell the, those smoothies to you know people and like just that like you're saving like the, the companies that were gonna throw that food. They're not gonna throw it anymore. They're gonna sell it to that person, to that company. So first, you have a gain right there, a financial gain. Uh, and then, the person who's using that product, it costs them less money to use that product than it does if you were to use like a like a full and a beautiful vegetable or beautiful fruit. You know, like so. I think it's really important for engineers to be able to articulate what are the benefits of of more sustainable um, options. But to be able to articulate that, I think we need numbers. We need to be able to calculate what, like what are the differences? What are, what is our impact? And what, what can we, like what are we uh, improving in terms of efficiency? We never gave Karen the chance to introduce herself, by the way. Karen, feel free to jump into the conversation. I think we need to have more questions to this gallery. Sorry, what? I saw you, uh, your, yes, oh, so many other questions. Yeah, yeah. other questions? Well, do we, do we can do the questions if you want. Uh, I just feel like we, we've had a, <laughs> okay, we've had a, a nice uh, conversation, so I didn't want to cut off that. Well, actually, I can restart my screen uh, real quick, that way we can see the rest of the questions. Um, because we still have a bit of time left. I'll share this. Um, yeah, so we had five questions. So, do you know about the UNSCGs? I think now you know about the UNSCGs. Um, I guess, I guess another important part, like we mentioned in the survey, is that most engineering students do not know about these goals. So, how do we? raise awareness on the UN SDGs because if we want people to participate, they first have to know that they exist, right? Because otherwise 
you just don't know that these are common goals. Um, do you guys have any thoughts or ideas for this one? I just know the 17 goals for set for 2030 by the UN. Um, is that the same? Yeah, but, but we're more asking like, how do we promote the UN SDGs to other students that don't know about them? I think opportunity is important. If a student have the opportunity uh, in realistic uh, to go to the work to see uh, uh, how uh, the job can make a difference for the industry or the people's uh, uh, life environment, and that is important. So not all the uh, knowledge comes from the books, right? Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. Um, in my engineering program, I didn't, uh, in shovel it's a bit different in the sense that we don't really have lectures. It's more, um, it's problem-based basically. So every two weeks or two or three weeks, we do a new project. But it's basically you're kind of on your own. There's a professor who's there to support, but you kind of have to do the lectures and do the exercises on your own. And personally, I learn much better when I'm applying something. So I think that you're right that we need to show more models. Like we need to talk about, we need to talk more about circular energy. We need to talk more about uh, ways to be efficient while still being profitable. Like we need to show that it is possible. And we just need to articulate that very clearly to the stakeholders that we work with so that they know, okay, yes, it's more sustainable, but the business reason of why I would go this direction is because I know I'm still gonna make money. Like it, it kind of, I mean- yeah, Money is important. Well, it is important in a sense that if you don't have money, uh, like how are you gonna pay your employees? How are you gonna pay you know, the, the, the infrastructure that you need? How are you gonna pay for the office that you have? Like, so money is essential. So we can't dis disregard it, but we just need to figure out how do we show that it is viable and we can like we can be sustainable and financially viable. I think that's the, the major or like that's I, a really I think there is a there is a positive uh, example. You know the Silicon Valley, uh, they have like Stanford there. I think that's uh, one of the success uh, reasons uh, for the Silicon Valley is that uh, they have very strong connection between the universities in Silicon Valley and a specific Stanford and the companies, the startup companies. Uh, they, they very much support the student to uh, get created uh, and uh, to, to go to um, establish a standard. Um, so, but this not happened anywhere so commonly um, because I saw that a lot of students are confused that what they learn from school is not so applicable uh, in the realistic world. So I think school and the companies should uh, have stronger connections in nowadays. Uh, so they can know what they learned from the school could be applied in, in one day in the future and have an impact on people's life and they can find the meaning of their career path. Exactly. And again, it's so important that we reframe how we see the problems because if we have a more holistic approach, you know, like not just a technical part, but we think about how it impacts society, how it impacts the environment, how it impacts the community. Um, I mean, you're, first, you're going to produce better results because you care about the people that you're serving. <laughs> um, but secondly, um, yeah, we, we just need to promote the young SDGs more and... Do you mean ice cream? Please, Fuji. Oh. <laughs> Cute. Um, uh, but, but yeah, for uh, the engineering curriculum, it's actually something that the CFS is going to start working more proactively. But we believe that like, like yeah, ethics and sustainability should be concepts that are really more integrated in our programs. They're, they shouldn't be like afterthoughts. They shouldn't be like these two classes that you do because you have to do them and no one takes them seriously. It should be like, oh, we have a capstone project, great. So you're gonna, you're gonna do your budget. You're gonna, also gonna use all these different environmental metrics. And you're gonna also think about the societal impact. Uh, where are you getting your materials? Who's, who's giving them to you? Like which company is giving them to you? Um, you know, like, it, like what's, the, what's the life cycle of your product? Are you able to like recycle it? Or do you, like, do you have to throw it away? Can you reuse it? 
you know, all those things need to be considered when we conceived and not be afterthoughts. Because sometimes it's just like, yeah, we built these things, but it's like, yeah, we built them, but we're not responsible of the impact of it. But we are responsible. Like as soon as you create something, you are like, you know, it's your brain baby in my head. Like you are responsible for what you put out there. And then now it's just a matter of really uh, integrating that in our curriculum so that all engineering students know about these these different uh, KPIs that we can help to measure environmental metrics. Um, and yeah, just basically improve improve the content of engineering curriculum because if if we really, you know, show a more realistic approach of what a problem is, and students can, you know, because when you study, when you, when you're doing school projects, you like you're not going to affect anyone, at least not in your first projects, right? It's like kind of all fic, uh, fiction in a sense that you're just saying, oh well, if I had this project, this is what I would do, blah blah blah. So you know. It's just kind of a way for you to test things while still being in an environment that lets you learn before you go into industry. And if in the industry you're wrong, I mean, your your people that are like people on your team might not take you seriously at that point if you if you don't necessarily have the right estimates or you have the right ideas, you know. So I think I think it's really really important to integrate it as soon as possible, as early as possible, and then during students career and at the end of the day I feel like most people who are engineering students really care about like sustainability and the earth um you can't find us on LinkedIn maybe we can find you on LinkedIn Daviani do you want to see if we can find her um but otherwise you can write me at present at cfs.ca and I will send you like a link to our both of our LinkedIn um but yeah, so I think, yes, it's super important to include it in the engineering curriculum. The deans are aware of this. The deans are working on the grand engineering challenges. So it's encouraging, but we need to be more proactive. And I think that's something the CFS will, will be uh, working on next year. And Davian is actually going to be like, I'm done. Uh, I'm actually done next month. So <laughs> I won't be there anymore, but Davian will still be on board. So um Oh, yeah, I guess I could send a link to my LinkedIn. That would be easier. <laughs> um, do you want to send mine, please, since I'm sharing my screen? Thank you. Um, I see that we're pretty much over time now, but before we end, do you guys have any other questions, comments that you'd like to share with us? Uh, not, not so many questions, but I agree with you. And I think that uh, um, for the support, we need more from the government to make an environment that, uh, or make a uh, atmosphere that everyone think that environment is important and they can give some financial support for the student startups uh, or some uh, new startups uh, to help uh, the entrepreneur to grow. And uh, we, we all know the sustainability <laughs> So those goals, those 70 goals is a long-term goal. It cannot see the effect uh, uh, tomorrow if you up, apply some um, yeah. uh, instrument today. Yeah, so it's a long-term. So the government should support and uh, make the environment, make the uh, atmosphere. Everyone think it's important. And uh, the, and, um, uh, the, the startup uh, people uh, who make those startup companies can make money. And then finally the uh, VC or I mean the capitals will come into the industry to invest the money on those uh, companies. And uh, it has a, a positive circular uh, to support those uh, and improve and uh, grow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. There are so many different possibilities. So that's why even though we are in an urgent situation and we need to act now and we need to stop playing around, like I am confident that our profession has, you know, we have the the creativity and like we are passionate and like we have, you know, that kind of solving problem mentality. So I do think engineers can do it, but yeah, you're right. Like we need to make sure that the future engineers and professional engineers have these tools and this knowledge to tackle these goals. 
Um, okay, so we're, we're running a bit over, <laughs> but these are discussions are super, super, so I could talk about this forever, to be honest, <laughs> but uh, thank you so much for coming. We were a small group today, but you know what, it, you guys were awesome. So I, I am happy that we came. So thank you so much for coming. I hope that our presentation, uh, you know, give you a bit of insight on what the UNSGs are. And um, oh, thank you, Karen, <laughs> that's really sweet. Um, and yeah, like stay, if you're interested, uh, stay connected to us. There's a LinkedIn, you can add us on LinkedIn, you can check out what the CFS does. But yeah, the next year, like the next mandate, um, I think we're, it's really, it's gonna be one of our major, major, something that we really wanna advocate on because I think like we need to stop playing around. Like this is not gonna work anymore. And I'm confident that Yanni will, uh, will do a great job next year, so. <laughs> Thank you, Andy. All right, well, on that note, have a great evening, everyone, and thank you again for coming.